So we've got a new update to Lightroom to look at. And while initially I didn't think there was actually gonna be much to talk about, maybe not worth a video, there is actually a new mask. And we love, we love a mask here on Tutorial Tuesday. There's a new mask that makes landscape photo editing just a little bit more interesting. And actually on further inspection, it's pretty versatile in the way that you can use it. We're gonna take a look. We're gonna take a look exactly how you can use it and all the little kind of additional tips and tricks you can use to get the most out of it. Let's jump in. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new... Hmm. It's still here. It's still coming every week. A fresh photography tutorial. Let's jump into Lightroom. I'm going to show you exactly what we're talking about. Now, we're going to look at a couple of different photos, because this mask is actually very applicable to lots of different kinds of landscape photos, which is actually pretty interesting because initially I thought it was just gonna be for this kind of thing. So starting with a photo like this, where we've got you know cliffs, we've got water, we've got sky, we've got a lighthouse down here. This is actually already somewhat edited, but if we wanted to apply some masks to this, there is a new way we can do this, similar to masks that we've seen for portrait photos where Lightroom will actually identify different parts of a subject, right? So facial skin, eyes, hair, stuff like that. And it'll actually be able to mask those out separately for you rather than you having to go in and actually manually mask those. Very similar now for landscapes. We're gonna come up here to the masking panel and we're actually gonna go here to landscape. If we click that, Lightroom's gonna analyze the photo and tell us what it thinks we've got here in the landscape, right? So here we've got sky, okay? So we can actually mask out the sky. That's not particularly new. We've already got the sky mask option, but it's useful to have it here within the kind of landscape mask options. We've got mountains here. So it's decided that all of this, you can see when I hover over, it's all in red. All of this is mountains, right? It's not perfect because we have got the kind of coastal bit down here, which is also counting as mountains, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Certainly still reasonably useful. And then we've got water where Lightroom is now masking out the sea in this case, which can be quite useful for slightly different things, right? Maybe you want to warm up one particular aspect of the photo. Maybe you want to change the tint on the mountain. So in this case, we could click all three of these, right? We're going to go ahead and click create mask. It's going to make three new masks, water, mountains, and sky. So for example, in this case, we might come over to the mountains mask, right? Which is where we've got the kind of land here. We might just bring the shadows up just a touch. Nothing crazy. Like I say, we've already done some editing to this photo, but I might just want to go ahead and add a little bit of magenta to this. Maybe I'm feeling like it's a little bit too green, or, or maybe I want to actually green it up a little bit more. Let's come over to the water mask. I might want to just warm that up a touch. Nothing too crazy, but just because it's reflecting that sky. And then similarly with the sky, I might come over, warm that up as well, and come down and do a little bit of a dehaze. Now, where this gets more interesting, I think, is in the ability to combine masks. So for example, radial gradient down here, this kind of coastal area, I'd like to make a little bit more, I'd like to add some clarity, basically. I'd like to make it a little bit more, you know, I don't know, interesting. We're gonna go ahead and do something like this. Now that's not the worst mask I could make, right? I get the cliff edge. I get a bit of the water though as well. So what I'm gonna do is right click on this mask, intersect mask with, and we're gonna go select landscape where we can now choose the mountains. If we click create mask, you'll see that radial gradient, which if I mouse over shows us what it would be if it was just radial gradient, so on the sea as well, is now only applied where it's intersecting with that mountains mask which means that I now have just a mask of this coastal area down here and then just falling onto the mountains a little bit. I could bring the exposure up a touch and I could come down and bring the clarity up a touch and I can still move this around, but you'll notice when I mask over this, in fact, if I press O, it is only being applied when it intersects with what Lyon considers to be the mountains. So this other mountains mask we've already got. That is super, super handy. Similarly, I could come in here and do a linear gradient, something like this. I could bring this in like this. So we've got a, a reasonably sort of feathered linear gradient, but I only want this to affect the water. So we go intersect mask with, select landscape. I'm gonna go water, create mask. Now look at that, we've got this gradiated kind of mask coming in here across the water. I could actually brighten that from that end 
maybe even warm it a little bit. And similarly, from this side, I could do something like this, very similar. Intersect mask with select landscape. I'm going to go water, create mask. And what's nice about this is I can then darken this side of the water. So we get this kind of graduated exposure across the sea here, which is which is pretty cool. There's a lot of application for this that you can use across all kinds of different landscapes. So let's look at some others because these masks are all gonna change. So for example, let's look at this photo, which is pretty different in terms of, we still got sky, but we've got some vegetation around here as opposed to mountains. We've got this path, we've got this big building. How is this going to be affected with these masks? Let's have a look. So if we go to the masking panel, we'll go landscape. This time, Lorem's gonna analyze the photo and you'll see we've got four masks here. So sky, absolutely, architecture, which seems to be masking out not just this one building, but the buildings in the background as well, which is really interesting. Vegetation, which is getting these foreground vegetation parts, and artificial ground, getting the path, which is quite clever because it's getting the shadows as well. Now, look, it's not perfect because when I go over vegetation, you'll see it's getting the sign as well, just here in front of the building. We could really easily manually remove that from the mask if we want to. Let's go ahead and actually click all of these. We'll create four separate masks. Artificial ground, so we can go ahead and maybe add some clarity to the artificial ground, something like that. Let's go over to the vegetation as well. We're gonna come up here. I'm just gonna bring the exposure up a touch. Maybe bring the shadows, maybe bring the highlights down. Let's go ahead and just warm those up a little bit. And I'm gonna bring the clarity up here as well, just a little bit, something like this. The architecture, I do wanna bring the clarity up on that quite a bit. So I want to make it pop a little bit more. I want to bring the exposure up on it as well. The sky in this case, I might not really do much with. I probably didn't need to make a mask for the sky itself. But what I could do is actually intersect the sky mask with a linear gradient. So I'm going to do something like this, a linear gradient that is now only affecting the sky. We're going to go ahead and darken that top bit of the sky. So we almost get that kind of circular polarizing filter look to that. I'm gonna go ahead and do another mask, something like a radial gradient, which I'll do across the middle of the photo, and I'll brighten that, just to make that, that kind of building pop a little bit more, something like that. And what we might do then is just go ahead and do another linear gradient from the bottom. Now, not every mask has to be intersecting with those landscape masks. Let's just darken this a little bit, just to push our viewer's eye to the center where the building is, and come back and do a little global edit, I'm just going to warm up the overall photo, maybe up the overall clarity and just bring that saturation down a little bit, vibrance up a touch, something like that. And then this is actually looking pretty good. We might come down and do a little bit of color grading. So maybe just bring those oranges and yellows down towards a, a more of a unified kind of orange feel. Maybe the greens over to the left a little bit as well and the blues just into the aquas. So we get this very slight sort of summery feel to the image. I think that actually looks pretty good. If you did want to remove something from the mask, so let's go ahead and look at that vegetation mask, for example, which if you press O on the keyboard, you can see is getting the sign here and something up here actually on the building. It'd be really easy to remove something from that. We just go subtract brush, and then we're just gonna brush this off. Let's bring that flow up. We're just gonna brush over where we don't want the mask to be applied. There you go, we might even get rid of some of the bits in the background there, like so. Okay, I think that's actually looking pretty good. A photo where I might actually have found this incredibly useful is something like this. This is when we had the Northern Lights down here in the south of England. So this is out actually looking out to sea, and we kind of got these nice colors in the sky. And I found that the white balance for this was quite difficult because I wanted some kind of foreground object. In this case, it's this old uh, Martello Tower which is quite nice, right? Right on the edge of the sea. But the white balance of the foreground is a little bit difficult to balance against the sky purely because, you know, we've got a situation where there's artificial lighting kind of lighting this foreground, which maybe needs to be balanced differently to the way the sky is. However, if we come up to the masking panel and I click landscape, we realistically, I would imagine gonna get the sky and then probably, yeah, some of this. So we've actually got water there, which is crazy. I kind of can't believe it's even picking that up. But if we go sky, architecture, let's go, do you know what? Let's go all four of these. This is a photo where I probably would have used this uh, for sure, would have made my life a lot easier because we can come down here to the vegetation. I'm just gonna cool that right down and I might even 
bring the saturation down on that a little bit as well. Let's go over to the architecture, do a similar sort of thing. Cool that down to something like that. Maybe bring that saturation down as well. But the sky, the sky is a little bit of a different situation, isn't it? Let's go ahead and bring maybe the contrast up. I'm going to bring the whites up a little bit as well. I'm going to come down and just bring the dehaze up a little bit here as well. Something like this. We could even bring the blacks down if we really want to emphasize the uh, the contrast of these colors here. And we could try cooling it down if you wanted to bring in some of those other some of those other kind of colors that are over here, some slightly more sort of purple colors. Warm is going to bring out more of those reds, something like that's going to look really intense, right? But being able to really change this photo with all these different masks is making a huge difference to what I probably would have ended up with as my final result. I'll keep it reasonably natural for now. So we'll go something like that, but I might even just increase the, the tint, the sort of magenta in that a little bit as well get something like that. And let's come down here and add some clarity to the sky as well. Now, what I might do as a kind of final thing, I just want to see what this would look like. Let's bring a, a radial gradient and just brighten that middle part of the image, something like that. And then maybe even a linear gradient coming up from the bottom. I'll do something like this. And what I'll do is I'll actually intersect this mask with, let's select landscape, and let's select vegetation. Let's create the mask. And if I just darken that a little bit, I can just help to bring that vegetation down, but with that gradient to sort of help with that. And that is actually, I think, looking pretty cool. And I think with the masks, it really helps me keep the colors that I want to keep in the photo and actually made my life a little bit easier overall. Yeah, you know, if I now was, if I cool the overall photo a little bit even further, maybe looking pretty interesting. Looking pretty interesting. I actually think that this is a really interesting mask to add into Lightroom. It makes a lot of sense, right? Following on from the portrait mask that we've seen, where it'll mask out those different features of a person. But this, this is something that I could see myself using, maybe not every time I'm editing a photo, because I've, partly I've, I've gotten so used to my kind of workflow of using different masks, but I think I'm gonna try and incorporate it because I think there's a lot, of, a lot of room there, a lot of scope for how you can use it and the things it can do. Let me know though, have you already had a little play with this mask in Lightroom? And if so, are you using it in any different ways that we've not had a look at? Or do you think you're just, you're just gonna stick with what you've been doing already? I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Let me know down in the comments. Of course, there's a full list of all the kit we use for these videos, these photos, all that kind of stuff as well. I'll pop that in the description so you can go and check that out for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new content all the time. I will see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.